Hello and welcome to Gaming Insider. I'm Ben Gilbert, back here once again to play video games on the internet live, and I'm joined by Kevin Webb. Hello. Hello, Kevin. How are you today? Doing all right. You? All right. Okay. I had a burrito. I'm feeling good. Um, even better, though, than the burrito is Red Dead Redemption 2, a brand new game you've probably been hearing about. Uh, it's, I would call it extremely unlikely you haven't heard about it because it's a big deal. It's the first game from the folks who made uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, Grand Theft Auto 4, all the Grand Theft Auto games, uh, the previous Red Dead Redemption, uh, the folks at Rockstar Games. And uh, yeah, so this is their, their first big new game in five years since uh, 2013's Grand Theft Auto 5. Uh, it's on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. We were playing it on PlayStation 4. Uh, this controller's not running out of battery. It's just red <laughs> because of Red Dead Redemption. Isn't that adorable? Adorable. It's tasteful. Like uh, you said it the up. little things. Yeah. It's anyway, um, so here we are in the Old West. It's 1899. It's like a fictionalized Old West. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to say, we're in the Louisiana ish, Colorado ish area. It's kind of a shrunken <laughs> version of America. So Louisiana obviously. To Colorado is a pretty big not, expanse. Not that close in real life, <laughs> understood for sure. Uh, but anyway, so there's a little bit of a shrunkenness to this game because, you know, you couldn't be, you couldn't spend, I don't know how long it would take to ride a horse across America, <laughs> a long time. But uh, you kind of start early in the game in like a kind of Rockies, Colorado area, and then you move on. You and your gang, the Vanderlind gang, are on the run. Uh, you're playing as Arthur Morgan. That's this fellow right here. Let's get a close-up on him. I'm going to... Get a little further away, a little closer, and here we go. All right, this is the closest I can get right now. But he's kind of a, I don't know, generic-ish cowboy figure type. Uh, he's got the hat and the, the beard or the mustache, <laughs> as it were, right now. All the makings of a wild west man. Exactly. He looks like, you know, he walked out of central casting from, like, True Grit or, uh, you know, another western. Uh, so, anyway... That's all the kind of like high level what Red Dead Redemption is. The reality is that it's like an open world game in the Old West and uh, there's a pretty serious narrative uh, that you should be following or that you will follow if you play the game. Uh, but it's also an open world so you can do kind of whatever you want. So right now I'm just kind of walking around town kind of slowly. There's going to be a lot of kind of slowly walking around because that's kind of how this game rolls. Um, I've heard it referred to as a slow pouring game. I think that's a good way to put it. It is definitely, it, it luxuriates in the details and in uh, being extremely deliberate, for lack of a better term. So like the mud here, you can see footprints individually made by, by Arthur in the mud, and then a splash of water as he walks out of them. He gets muddy. I can say hello back to this person who just said evening to me. I could also rob him or antagonize him. We're just going to say hello right now. Uh, but every single person we walk past here I can talk to, I can keep that conversation going. This is turning into one of them days. And so I guess like in that vein, you know, you can do some of the same stuff in GTA. Oh, it's just like interact like stopping people on the street. Sure. What kind of like consequences are there? in uh, Red Dead Redemption for that. So I feel like it's like kind of like an evolution of Grand Theft Auto, where in, Red, in Grand Theft Auto you might be able to say like hello, or I think you could respond like positively or negatively in GTA V, and that's pretty much it. Uh, in this, you can respond positively, you can respond negatively, you could rob them, and then if you respond negatively, they might respond negatively back. It might turn into a fist fight. It might turn into a gunfight. Uh, it might turn into nothing. You might greet somebody and they might say, I don't want to hear shit from you. And you're like, whoa, whoa! And that's it. And that's just like the interaction you had with that person. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of all over the place. Like, I think that's kind of the point of this game, though, is that you can have all these interactions with people that are a little bit, a little bit deeper than they were previously. Not dramatically. Yeah. The guy was very upset that I bumped into him. Um, so there's kind of a lot going in here. I figured we'd just stop into the saloon and see what's going on. Uh, in a lot of video games, everything would be like, I feel like everything would feel really canned in here, right? Like you'd look around, you'd see like a person who's like repeating things or whatever. You see some of that, but it's like, I don't know, like this guy's smoking a cigarette and like these two are having a conversation and the conversation will end at some point and she'll walk away and go do something else. Or like this guy who's playing piano will keep playing different songs. It's got like a variety of different songs. And you could find the seams in it, right? Like if you wanted to just sit here and watch everybody for 10 minutes, I'm sure you could start seeing repeating things. But there's a lot of 
the world feeling like pretty alive, like surprisingly alive, like maybe too alive. Is that how I would and put so it? So in that vein, in like a saloon scene like that, if you start a fight with someone or if you rob someone in the middle of a room, sure. Do the other people all react to that? Is it only certain people who might respond? Oh. There's a great example. I can just run in. If I walk into the saloon, he pushes open the doors, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna run back in. And he bursts through. And somebody says, holy shit! Like, gotcha. and then, if you wanna get all the way crazy, you just pull out this gun. And everybody starts freaking out. There's the heat. Okay. Crime reported. And so that's like, guys, it looks so like evacuates. GTA style where, you know, you pull the trigger, oh, they start know. to escalate. And you can see on my map here, on the, in the lower left, there's like an icon for eyewitnesses. There's a few different eyewitnesses. There's red eyewitnesses and there's white eyewitnesses. Uh, red means that they... I want to say that they saw you, that they're a witness, versus they're like still investigating. But you can see that things kind of pop off real quick. I did not, I mean, I shot, I did fire the, the gun, but I didn't really do too much. But everybody runs for their life because yeah. you pulled out a gun in the middle of a bar and they're like, yo, who, that guy pulled out a gun, like what the hell? Like this person's just running. And so the red area in the minimap, is that your, I guess, GTA-like wanted range? Or does exactly. the bounty... Uh, continue like no, 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 exactly that. It, so the bounty d can d will continue on afterwards. Okay. But if I escape this red area, I've escaped the law for the time being. So this guy is running because he's scared of the gunfight that's happening. I'm getting shot from behind by these people. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. All right. And you can see in my lower left where the map is. There's those different circles. Mm -hmm. So you can see in the middle there's co what are called cores. So like the heart, the lightning, the the eye. In the middle of those circles there's the cores, which is kind of like the base level amount of something you have. Okay. And on the outside is like the fortification of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like health versus having a shield, sort of. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, food items, for the most part, replenish your cores, whereas elixirs and tonics and stuff like that, like potions, I'm gonna just jump off this cliff. Uh, they, oh no! Yes. Oh, it's terrible. I was gonna say, I'm like, there has to be some kind of fall damage, but all right. Oh yeah, you yeah. die. Yeah. You're yeah. dead. Red Dead Redemption. This game is about high life up, and how death. High. <laughs> that uh, so yeah, there's, there's these cores in the bottom that you kind of have to maintain, and so you can, if you eat stuff, for instance, your health core will go up. If you uh, exercise, I think, your stamina core will go up. Mm -hmm. uh, but various different things. Uh, and you can also just straight up use consumables for that stuff. So he has a satchel that at any point I can open. I'm gonna open it right now if I can start the game again. There we go. Um, and so I have a satchel that's full of stuff. I've got these various cooked game meats. You want to kind of eat those maybe before you go into a mission because you want to fortify some stuff. So you can see that these like moderately restores all cores or whatever else, right? They have different yeah. status effects. Uh, and the same thing goes for these. So you can have like some opened cocaine gum, your favorite. Cocaine gum. Who doesn't love cocaine gum? It's a classic right uh, there. Fully restores stamina and fortifies slightly, so it'll just completely restore your... So if you're like running away from somebody and you throw some cocaine gum in, you can keep running for longer, for instance, or Got whatever it. else. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of those kind of status effects. Uh, and also, so we can jump to the map real quick. This game is very big. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, and hopefully it'll show where I have a bounty, yes. So I am currently in the town of Valentine and I have a bounty in this area. It's in red writing, so it's hard for me to read, but it looks like it says $10. So is the town just, or the area of Valentine, it's just these buildings right here, or is it the larger? It's the larger area. You back. can see the, okay. the more, basically when I cross this river, it disappears, right? So it's this gotcha. whole area okay. up to the river, all the way down here, all the way over here. Like this is all Valentine, it's like a state basically. Uh, and so if I zoom out a little more, you'll see there's strawberry over here. I've got a separate bounty there for $115. Some real bad mess happened there. Down here, I'm wanted dead or alive in Blackwater. That's the original mission that happens before the game starts. Mm -hmm. You exit Blackwater with your whole gang because something went real wrong and you got to escape the law. And so if you go to Blackwater, you'll probably get killed like immediately. I haven't <laughs> been there. I don't know what will happen. Gotcha. Um, and this is all described as the Heartlands. Down here, this is all New Hanover up here. Down here is Lemoyne. That's like the kind of Louisiana area. Again, these are all fake versions of US places, yeah, right? They're not real places. 
I guess, for about 30 hours at this point, and this is yeah. how much of the map you've uncovered. Are there more to the edges? Like how you say you haven't been to Blackwater yet? So the rest of this is going to fill in? As far as I know, I yeah. And you okay. can see this is all blank. Like, it goes, Jeez. I think there's okay. a lot more of this game that yeah. I've not seen yet. And this is at 30 hours. Uh, for the folks at home, yeah. we are playing on PlayStation 4. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption 2 is actually not on PC yet. So it's console exclusive at the moment. Yes. So we're playing on the PS4 version. Uh, I do have my handy Mac here to answer your questions. So it's if true. you ask us questions in the chat, I'll do my best to uh, pick up and respond and ask Ben since he has spent much, much, much more time with the game. Uh, I've been playing it for the past week-ish. They gave us a code on, I think, the 16th or something like that. Uh, and I've been playing it more or less ever since. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with it. Um, I'm not going to be spoiling anything here, so don't worry about that. Uh, you know, unless you're worried about like having some of a tiny map, a part of the map spoiled, a few types of like, I don't know, little stuff. I'm not going to spoil any major story beats. Don't worry too much about that. Um, what I am going to do though is pay off my bounties. So I'm riding over here. I'm riding to this train station, which is where the post office is. I'm going to pull up. Whoa, whoa, cool it, cool it, cool it. All right, I'm going to get off. Um, so, Hello. because I have a bounty, bounty hunters will come after me, and they are really inconvenient. Mm -hmm. And I really don't like being suddenly murdered by a gang of guys. So, I'm going to go here and pay my, uh, my bounty so that I don't have to worry about that. So That's a good, a good question. So I've got $467, which is like $10 million in 1899 money. Just to be honest, <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to pay off all my debts. And so there are different regions for each bounty, I guess. It just sticks with that. Okay. Exactly that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So here's also, beyond just paying the bounties here, you can also buy train tickets here, uh, which is kind of a fast travel way. So, or a way to fast travel, I should say. So if you want to go to any of these different places, St. Denis is the New Orleans of the game. It's the one city that exists. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to go there. Uh, I'm going to mostly stay in the kind of smaller towns because I don't want to... I think you should see St. Denis for yourself. Um, but we are going to do some story missions, so I'm going to head out of here and we're going to go do that. All right, um, some action. Let's do it. Get some action. This game is not big on action. <laughs> should be clear. Yeah, I see someone in the chat is actually asking for like fast forward, but it seems like no. that's part of the open world nature is that yeah, there are no cars. It's just the horse. And you're out here to, here to explore. Yeah. I mean, I should also note, like I said this before, it's like a slow pouring game. Like this is a this is not a game that's big on action. It's not big on on I don't know. Like there are big gunfights. There are times where you will rob a train or a stagecoach or you know, save somebody who's been taken hostage by another gang or whatever, right? There are action moments, but this is not an action-heavy game. It is heavy on narrative, it is heavy on world building, it is heavy on being like a period piece. It is not necessarily big on, I walked past the mission. Uh, it's not, oh, I just accidentally killed somebody. Ooh. Oh, no, he's not dead, he's not dead. <laughs> What's no. the crime, though? I don't know. Oh! Whoa. Just right into the wall with the horse! <laughs> so you can definitely accidentally do stuff. Like, I just did that by accident. That's really unfortunate. What's he going to report you for? It and for, yeah, for, like, accosting him. Well, yeah, what's the bounty on that? Defuse. Okay, okay. I ain't looking for trouble. All right, so just the low level of wanted. He wants me to get out of here. So I'm going to get out of here. What about the horse? Is it unconscious right now? What's that? The horse. What about my horse? I ran into the wall. Is it still? Oh, it's good. Yeah, it'll be good. <laughs> I got to go to the, I'm going to go back to the post office, which is really obnoxious, actually. Um, so this is kind of, this is where I should say that the, the world, the, the depth of the world kind of, I, I want to say breaks down maybe a little bit. OK. Because, like, I was just trying to turn around. I made a mistake and I stepped on somebody. And it's like, <laughs> illegal! You've made a mistake! You've done something, like, sort of wrong, but, like, not really, right? Yeah. Like, I didn't mean to bump into the dude with my horse. And it turns into a, tr a crime, right? <laughs> it's not really a crime. I, I diffused it. It's not, there's not going to be a, I don't think there's going to be a bounty, for instance. Um, and so I can go back to where I was and everything seems to be OK, I think. Let me check on the map. Um, yes, yes. 
So we have a question in the chat also of how long, how many days can you go in game without needing to shower? Because that is a mechanic in this game that Ooh. you can get too smelly. You can definitely get too smelly. Offensively smelly. Uh, which too I've, is a crime. I've only gone a few, maybe a day or two. I take, uh, you take baths. The baths are slow. You have to wash <laughs> each limb individually. I'm not kidding. Are there quick times for each limb? Yes. That's important to me. There are. <laughs> you can also hire somebody to come and like assist you in your bath, which is wow. like a little awkward. Um, so let's ride off and, and get a little bit, bit brighter. It's still right it's still there. nighttime, and we're, we're trying to get some some daytime action here. I want to get this. You can see that since I did that, there's a. It's also I think it says late at night, but there's supposed to be a mission of, available in town that isn't available because it's the middle of the night. So I'm gonna let's ride over to our gang and see them because that is more interesting. Where is the gang? Ooh. And so let's say you were going from Strawberry in the lower left all the way to the edge of the Cumberland Forest at the top of the map. Sure. About how long would that take to like ride on the horse? Like real time? Yeah. If we were just going to sit and do it from like the lower left just to the very top. Oh, man. A long time. Yeah. Is it possible like, like I could just be sitting here for 30 minutes on the horse? I don't know about 30 minutes, but it's a long ride. Okay. It's definitely a long ride. It doesn't, in fairness to the game, it doesn't really do that to you very often. It doesn't, like, make you ride across the whole map or whatever. It's usually more, like, local-ish things. And yeah. so you're not usually riding for a very, very long time. Um, but there are definitely moments where you're like, all right, this is going. And so in those moments, you can hit cinematic camera, and they'll just keep going. So there's my cinematic camera. It looks like a movie. And it will follow the path. Uh, that it's on and uh, go towards the thing that I've set an objective for and whatever. And the same thing if you're on like the middle of a mission. It'll just keep going towards the mission. Yeah. And you can you still have to keep pressing X um, or hold down X uh, to keep your horse going. But yeah, it's not so bad. Anyway, we're here at camp. Uh, this is the second camp in the game. There is multiple camps. Um, or maybe this might be the first one still actually. Are we still in the first one? Oh, this is an older save. All right, great. So I'm further ahead in this game than this is, but this is still okay. the first camp. Uh, I'm going to hitch my horse up. Or not. <laughs> All right. So this is camp. It's full of people. You can only walk so quickly in camp. Uh, but I'm going to grab a. Uh, I'm going to grab some sleep. Cool. We're going to knock out until the morning, and then we can come back and see this place in the daytime, which looks much better. Are there any like benefits, or like do you need to sleep? Or I know you need to like manage your food and like do hunting to make sure you get like bonuses and like, totally. you know your health back and bath. So what happens from sleeping? What do you? What's the benefit? Um, sleeping gives you health and uh, stamina. I want to say it recharges all your stuff. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, they, normal they like night at the end kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Change time of day. <laughs> There's a small break in, break in loading. There's also like no loads. There's one load when the game starts, and it's long. But that's that. It doesn't load again throughout the game. Um, Even when you uh, died earlier, it seemed like it turned around really quickly. Yeah, yeah it was definitely pretty quick. Um, so while we're here at camp, it's much prettier in the middle of the day. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get my shave on. So since I don't have a beard, I cannot, like, you can't add hair. Yeah. It just operates like hair does, basically, right? So, like, he has a mustache right now. I can make it shorter. I can make him look like a early 20th century film director. I can make him look like a uh, Marlboro Burt Man. Reynolds, yeah. Burt Reynolds, exactly. <laughs> but, like, I can't make it bigger, and I can't add a chin or chops. Unless he, but he does grow hair on his face over time, right? So like in mm. three days, he will have a bushy, scruffy beard that I will then be able to do something with. But right now, that's it. Is any of this stuff like unlockable, or can you, you know, customize it from the start of the game? Obviously, you, you have can, to wait yeah. for it to grow, but you don't have to like unlock mutton chops or. No. If I want to be Wolverine, I can just do that. You can definitely just do that. Awesome. I would suggest it even. Um, and then you can also change your uh, wardrobe while you're here. There's other ways to do this stuff. You can do this stuff in town. Uh, if it seems like this is not the most action-packed stuff, that's, again, 
This game is not action packed. <laughs> Uh, so there's lots of different outfits. Let's just go through some outfits. So somebody asked for the general story overview, which I know you said you know you play as Arthur Morgan and you're out here with your gang and whatnot. Sure. But what are some of the things that I guess trigger just the story into motion? Uh, so at the beginning, before the game starts, there's like I, I alluded to this a little bit before about Blackwater, how there was like a, a fight in Blackwater. There was some sort of robbery that took place on a boat that. Uh, didn't work out well, I guess, and then everybody had to leave. So that's basically, the whole story is like, your gang is on the run, you're trying to survive. This is your first base camp, but you guys cause a bunch of trouble because you're a gang of outlaws, and so immediately you get pushed further. And yeah. so that's the story, it's a road tale. Okay. Uh, and it's all headed up by Dutch Vanderlyn, this guy right here. Well, that's Micah. He's new. He's kind of terrible. Arthur is, uh, he's known Dutch his whole life, so they have like a pretty special relationship. He's kind of like the second in command to the gang. Gotcha. Um, Bootlicker. Well, I suppose I should be getting off. All right, then. Okay, take care, Dutch. Um, so there's a lot of color in this ga in this camp, and there's a lot of reason to actually come back between missions and talk to these people because they progress. Uh, there's like an ongoing story that you have with each character, just like you would in real life, right? Like okay. you know them, they talk about things you did together. Maybe you just sit down and talk about how you're feeling right now. I'm not kidding. There is a place that you can just like sit down behind. It's over there, uh, and you can just sit down and talk about about whatever you want. Hmm. And it's it's uh, an adorable little addition to the game. I don't know. It makes it gives it more color, you know. Uh, so what we're gonna do, go do is we're gonna go with John Marston, uh, John Marston, the hero of the first Red Dead Redemption, who's also in the gang. We're gonna go with him, and uh, I believe we're gonna herd some sheep, and then yeah. some things are gonna happen. Okay. So we're gonna go see how that goes. And so this is a story mission, correct? This is a story mission. It is a mission that will progress. It's like a not small story mission, but it's not like gonna ruin the game for you or anything, so don't worry about that. So as we're on the way, somebody asked, Sure. Are there random attacks in the game? So you said there are bounty hunters and you're actively wanted, people will come and chase you down. Yeah. Are there bandits or anything along the road or like animals that might come out and hunt? Come out and get you? There sure are. There are both animals and bandits that will come out and get you. Oh. There's other gangs, the O'Driscolls. <laughs> I think there's uh, an animal on the right there. The Lemoyne Raiders. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to go up there. I'm just looking over here at, real quick at this uh, smoke signal you can see in the distance. Those are oftentimes bandit camps. They could be other things, too. Okay. Um, so you can go raid bandit camps like other gangs. Uh, that will also have story implications. Like, it's not just a measure of, it's not just a side thing to do. Like, there's something, there's more there than that. Um, cool. Yeah. Also, we should we should doubt. If anybody has questions, comments, whatever, please get at us. I'm happy to happy to answer whatever as best I can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to the person who asked, hook me up with a copy. Can't Unfortunately, I wasn't even hooked so, up with a copy. It's true. <laughs> it's true. We got one code. Yeah, start. Ben was lucky, oh, but myself, I will start playing you, later today. Yes. The game is actually pre-installing. Make sure that you at home yeah, pre-install because this game is gigantic. I think the download is like 100 gigs or more on Xbox and just under 100 on PlayStation 4. So, yeah, you got to spend some time. Even if you go and buy the, the game on disc, it actually comes on two discs. Yeah. So, it is massive in every sense of the world. And this guy, John Marston, so he was, since he was in Red Dead 1, uh, He's younger in this one. This game is a prequel, so it's like 11 years before the previous Red Dead. So this, uh, yeah, he's a little dumber. He's a little greener. He's a little less honorable. But uh, it's interesting seeing him grow. Like if you played the first game, it's especially meaningful because he's like a large character in this game. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's awesome that they have that kind of overlap. Oh, there's a lot of. If you play the first one, you'll appreciate stuff in this game. But if you didn't, you'll still. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, that's that's a crucial thing I think we should point out. Knowing... But, well, you was at that thing in Blackwater. We already seen Pinkerton's here. New century's coming. Sure, sure. This life, this way, well... 
to the person who said they want to see some multiplayer, unfortunately, Red Dead Online, which is the online component of Red Dead Redemption 2, is not going to launch until November, maybe even December. They, they're going to start the beta in November, but there's not a date just yet. Right. So it'll enter beta. They said there will be some, you know, growing pain, some probably some issues starting out to get it stable, and then it'll be launching sometime, hopefully before the end of the year. Hopefully, should be November or something like that. Yeah, they said mid-November for the beta, so got it, got you know, it, got it. right. Gives them a couple of weeks before it becomes in January. Um, so I'm gonna hitch this horse up. I'm gonna stop actually for a moment before I go inside. I'm gonna pat my horse. Also, you can see that he's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna give him a little bit of a. Uh, a uh, wash or a brushing, excuse me. Uh, it's important you do this stuff. There's a horse bond in this game. Go ahead. I'm not gonna brush him. <laughs> wow, that's pretty. That's pretty. I mean, up. that mane is looking pretty tight. Maybe you can't brush it. Oh, anymore. I don't think I'm allowed to because it's in the middle of the story, mission. Oh. <laughs> What's going on here, pal? I'm supposed to lead you. Come on. I think your horse bond is too low. Clearly. To the person who, this is in fact a live video. YouTube lets you set up a stream so people can know about it in advance, but we are actually playing the game live. This yeah. is not pre-recorded. No. So, uh, there might be people who watch it after the fact. The stream will be up on our YouTube channel, Tech Insider, for you to watch after the fact, but now's the chance to get the questions in if you got them. Can you head in, pick up the sniper rifle? I'll explain later. Don't you wear yourself out now. Hello. And for the couple of people right now who have asked about the game being on PC, we were talking about this earlier. Grand Theft Auto V took about a year and a half from its original console release, which was on like PS3 and Xbox 360. Then a year later, it came out on PS4 and Xbox One. And then about six months after that, it came to PC. So you can probably expect at least a year or so before we get rumblings about there being a PC port of the game. Sounds about right. So I picked up a sniper rifle from this guy, but this is a gun store where you can go get, you can get guns customized here. Uh, you can get them made to fire a little bit more efficiently or a little bit more powerfully, but it, there's no huge upgrade tree. There's no skill tree in this game. There's not like, you're not earning XP and then unlocking things. Your, uh, your cores, like your stamina core and stuff levels up over time, but it's solely from use. So if you're like running a lot, your stamina core will increase in over time. Uh, stuff like that. But there's not like a traditional, you know, unlock points and then unlock skills kind of thing along the Is there the like trip. a Metal Gear Solid pull up button where I can just sit and do pull ups for? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you can definitely do gotcha. five finger fillet as long as you want, just over and, over and over and over and over and get nasty at that. I've gotten, I would say, okay at it. Okay. It's a good minigame. It's a very good minigame. It's a lot of small things, I guess, to work on and help your character progress. That's right. Um, so this part, this is, we're going to actually see a decent sized uh, change in the story from this mission. I but you're going to have to watch some cow or er, some sheep herding first, unfortunately. Uh, He's got a decent sized horse and you. I will baby horse. horse. <laughs> you start with normal horse and then for some weird reason they give you this baby horse and it's, it's no good. But not a pony, just a baby horse. Not a pony, oh, just a smaller horse. Can you get a pony, a true pony? I don't think so. Maybe. I haven't seen one. You can go to stables and get all sorts of different horses, so it's a whole thing. DLC ponies. There we go. <laughs> so I took his son on a fishing trip earlier because his wife asked me to take his son on a fishing trip, which, like, that's pretty awkward. Yeah. Uh, but I did do that, so they're talking about it because John, at some point, deserted his family, and it's a whole thing. There's a point of contention. Basically, both Arthur and... Uh, John were like taken in by Dutch when they were kids, and so there's a little bit of a rivalry there, like almost like they were brothers, but they're kind of not. I mean, they're definitely not, but they sort of are. Uh, somebody asked, are there difficulty settings? Can you set it to hard or easy? Or is it like other open world games where it just kind of sets the tone? As far as I know, it just is. Okay. I have not found it particularly difficult, I should note. Like it's. I don't know. The worst thing will happen is you'll get into a, a bad gunfight or something, but it's okay. Have you felt like the missions have gotten more challenging over time at least, or are they all just kind of baseline? There's definitely not a baseline. This game is okay. not this game is not do standards. There's not a lot of like normal video game stuff in this game. I don't know how else to put that. Like every mission feels different, even though it might just be cover-based shooting, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, 
like this mission, I think this is the right mission if I'm not wrong, starts with you stealing sheep and ends with a bunch of other crazy stuff that has nothing to do with stealing sheep. It's a lot of that. Like you go take Jack's done fishing and you meet the G-Men. Like the G-Men come to talk to you and be like, you should stop living like an outlaw. And you're like, whoa, G-Men! And you're there with this kid. It's crazy. It's totally like, and I just did not expect it at all. I thought it was a side mission. Not a side mission. No side missions in this game. All the side missions in this game are missions. Every mission is like a main mission. Okay. Which, yeah. We have some people in the chat discussing uh, whether or not the game is suitable for children. So I, I can say off the bat that this game has very much mature content, but I'll let you describe, is it a PG-13 or more of that hard R NC-17 deal? I mean, like, would you show your child There Will Be Blood? <laughs> would you show them their true grit? Like, I would not. I would say, that I would argue they are too mature, both literally and, like, graphically, right? Okay. But, that said, uh, so I'm, I'm learning how to use a sniper rifle here. I'm supposed to shoot it near, how do I? There's a way to, all right. How to zoom the scope? There's a way to zoom in more, but I'm not doing it. It's okay. So I'm not supposed to shoot the sheep. I could just scare the ranchers. One of them don't scare too easy. Put another shot in close. In close. I'll shoot it close. That ought to do it. <laughs> all right, he's out. And so we're not just herding these sheep. It seems like you're just going to go stake them. Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. Yeah. We will <laughs> herd them, but we have to take, we had to scare the, the, Rustlers first, yeah. exactly. Okay. Where's my horse at? There's my horse. It's too small, I couldn't even see him. Okay, when I got this horse, I was so mad that they took away my other horse that I named him F this horse because I wanted my old horse. It's so sad. It's a shame. But now what me a and this horse have become better for birds. All your life. That's right. His name. Cursed. All right, so I almost think this is kind of a play on the first game where you start very early on by having to herd some cows, I want to say, mm -hmm. and it's terrible. It's like no fun at all, uh, and a bad. it's like a bad introduction to the game, uh, and it's the one thing that I think a lot of people complain about. Uh, it's certainly something I complain about in the game, uh, and I feel like this is them being like, yes, we know, we heard that, and here is... I think I was complaining to you actually about this mission where I said like, man, I'm hurting some freaking cattle, like I can't believe it. And then halfway through the mission, it kind of flips Things on change, you. Gosh. And you're like, oh, right, good, you know? Uh, so anyway, we gotta, we gotta rustle these, yeah. these stupid some sheep. Some light sheep herding mechanics here. Some light sheep herding indeed. Okay. You can yell at them. Can we play Uncharted next time? I don't think that we'll be playing Uncharted. I think that we no. will be playing Newer games in general, we try to bring you, yeah. you know, the stuff that we have been blessed to receive. Yeah. I'm trying to think what, what our next game is, actually. Oh, I don't know. We Soul Calibur? Yeah, Soul Calibur might be good. Mega Man 11. Can, we can oh, maybe yeah. take some recommendations, but we're definitely trying to keep it in uh, the scope of 2018. Yeah. Hey, I'd love to hear what you guys want to see. Especially, yeah, if it was from this year, if it's uh, something recent. We, we have uh, decent, I think at this point, we have most of the codes for the year. Uh, Still waiting on Battlefield. Yeah. Coming up. You know Battlefield, Dark Siders 3, Pokemon. Handful of stuff. Uh, but this is the last big game of the I mean, Smash Brothers, obviously, but this is the, the, the biggest game of the year. The last, yeah. like, giant blockbuster, I want to say. Uh, anyway, so you can see this is relatively simplistic. It's just about staying behind them, kind of. Going back and forth, okay. getting them going. I promise it will get more exciting than the hurting later in this mission. Uh, but you're gonna have to bear with me for a minute here. Again, <laughs> slow pouring game. Very, very slow in general. Like animations. Like you're so early on in the game, you know, you're like looting a house, right? Mm -hmm. You've, you've, whatever. You've saved somebody, but whatever. It doesn't matter. You're looting a house, and the the act of looting is like. It's very slow. It's opening each drawer. It's looking at each item in each drawer and picking it up, right? It's not just like none collect all, mechanics. right? There's no, <laughs> none of those like easy accessibility things in video games are there. Like they really, really want you to feel like you are there in, in their version of the Old West, uh, which is really cool, but also can be just like, you know, if you get home at night and you have an hour to play a game or something, it can be 
I could see it being frustrating, right? Yeah. Because you might not get a lot done in that hour. It's like you just might ride for 40 of those minutes or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. Oh, all right. Sounds like we've got some questions. Let's do it. We have a couple. So someone asked, how are the horse riding controls as we see you herding sheep this time around? They're good. The horse riding is good. Uh, it, you know, I think that it could be more fun maybe to ride a horse. That's, I don't know that's something that they can fix, um, but it feels fine. It's not hard to control the horse. There are sometimes instances where I'm out riding fast and I'm just trying to get somewhere and the horse trips and Arthur goes flying and it's like the actual most violent thing I've ever seen in a video game. <laughs> uh, and that kind of stinks because like, you know, it just Jeez. is out of nowhere and it's incredibly harsh That's to watch. Cool, like uh, but that said, uh, in general, I found it fine. Like the horse riding and control is I can, there's a, a level of fineness of control that is good. Okay. Um, I think in general, this game controls kind of badly compared to a lot of other games. Like something like Uncharted or Horizon Zero Dawn or okay. whatever, something more character, like Assassin's Creed. Like those games feel better in terms of the control of the character, but this game is doing so much more that it's, it feels like a ridiculous comparison. Like this feels like a full step ahead. Anyway, here's a good example of some of the complex interactions in this game. Okay, and we have a more serious question about. Oh, hold on. Uh, let's let's let this pull away. So. You trying to say? I'm trying to say you give me 25% kickback, and I won't say nothing to nobody. Everything all right here? Excuse me? Sure, I'll excuse you for 25%. You want me to put another hole in your head? Folks swing for rustling livestock. 25%. 15. 20. 18. Done. There's really, really good voice acting in this game. It's like very well done. Calm yourself, friend. Just think of it as I'm buying your sins. Uh, you're buying. But we're paying. Go on now. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. And so in that sense, you don't have, do you have control over that negotiation? No. That cuts you? Gotcha. No. There are instances where you can choose like whether or not to kill somebody. There's a couple of times where you can make a choice that will have an impact on the story mm -hmm. and it will impact your character and a few other things. But uh, that's not one of them. Okay. Anyway, things are about to pop off in about two seconds. So hit me with that question. So. John Guidry asks, uh, in the first Red Dead, pretty much the only races were white, Indian, and Mexican. Mm -hmm. Is this game more diverse? Can he expect any black or Asian characters? Yes. Okay. Yes. The gang is surprisingly diverse, I would say. Like, more than it probably would have been in the 1890s, let's put it that way. Okay. In a good way. It's like, it's good for the game, but, like, maybe not historically perfect. Just because, like... <laughs> I don't know. They're a bunch of out <sighs> they're a bunch of outlaws. They're not. They're like, but it's also like a cowboy thing. So they have like sometimes seemingly progressive philosophies about things. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. they're kind of progressive, kind of not. It's a very. Mm, Do that you said, think that there yes. is uh, cultural commentary at work? Do you think that the game has something to say about this time in history? It definitely has something to say about the American dream and American history, and I think it isn't as maybe serious as it could be. You can hear Dutch mouthing off inside. <laughs> Sorry, we're about to we're gonna go in here and talk to Dutch, but uh, I think that there is some for sure, and I have admittedly not seen it all, so there could be it could go much deeper. But there's definitely an overall bigger conversation about like. Should society exist? Like, is society a good thing versus the freedom of a less, maybe a less organized society? Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that said, there's not like a lot of talk about slavery, for instance, which would have probably been a pretty big deal in 1899, you'd imagine. <laughs> uh, there's not a ton of talk about. I haven't seen a lot of Native Americans yet. In general, they make a brief appearance early on. I am certain that they will reappear, but there's definitely not a lot of that. And we're also going south, right? So we're going to be going to Louisiana. Like, we'll see if they deal with those complex racial narratives that would exist at that time that exist today, but I kind of am not so 
positive, I guess. Is, I, I'm not, <laughs> not high expectations. Not exa exactly. Gotcha. I'm not okay. expecting it is where I would, I would say. Uh, I think they go a little bit deeper than most games do, but still not like film level, for instance, right? Like I think films would probably deal with this a little bit more Gentlemen. seriously. Where have you been? Working. Marston's thing. Good. And this <laughs> way to get some pay. Um, a few sheep. Leopold, my good friend, as long as you're here, why don't you and John go make sure there ain't no funny business? Of course. Gentlemen. Drink? Sure. Leopold is a German fellow. Nothing he handles like mostly finances. He does, uh, he, he like lends people money and then you go act like the tough guy for him, basically. But he's like the bookkeeper. Makes sense. Oh, he's Austrian, excuse me. I'm not German. Dutch Vanderlyn finishing school has some strange graduates. That it does. To your good health. Thank you. Vanderlyn! What the hell? This is one of the game's first big antagonists you me, that you encounter. You keep robbing me. My name is Leviticus Cornwall. I am not a man to be messed with by the likes of you. Get out here before I have oh. these men killed. What do you think? So. Things you can escalated. see things have escalated from sheep herding to this. Like, ostensibly, this is a mission where John and I were just going to go do some side mission, right? Like, he says, I, I heard something about sheep. We're going to go maybe take care of some sheep. And you're like, cool. And you go take care of some sheep with him. It's kind of boring. It's like, you go herd sheep. It's fine. And then you go into town. And you're like, let's go get a drink. We'll meet Dutch. It'll be great. And you're like, cool. Let's go get that. Let's go do that. And then, like, a huge twist happens in the middle of seemingly something banal, right? <laughs> this game is. All about that. Lots of that. You start spinning a yarn. I would say it's. When I think the moment's right, I'll make a move. I would say it does that more than. Why not? More than living up to expectations, right? Where you're like, oh, this is a big mission. I should get ready. Like you can't really tell almost ever, which is yeah. good. I kind of I like that. It makes it feel natural. Like a lot of this game feels like naturalistic, for lack yeah. of a better term. As opposed to the usual, like you know. Here are the main story quests. Right. Here are a dozen side things. This is a terrible so you also see this is a this moment is a where it case. teaches you a mechanic as well, a uh, quick draw mechanic or a, a dual mechanic. Admonishing a man for the sins of another. So slowly pressing R2, you can see in the lower right, it says to draw, and this is the, this is essentially how it works if you're having a dual as well. So I'm going to very slowly fill up. You can also hear Dutch talking mad smack. It's the best. So in the lower right is what we're looking at here, but I think we might be about right there. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, I made a huge mistake. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Wrong guy? No, I pressed the wrong button. So it's OK. <laughs> uh, we're going to retry the checkpoint, and it's going to give me another shot at that. OK. So it's fine. So essentially, that's, that's dead aim mode, which is the ability to like check off various dudes and then kill them all in one shot. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a serious signature, I would yes. say, as well. Yeah. From uh, Red Dead Revolver, even, I think, that I was in. God bless. I'm pressing the wrong button again. Please excuse me. <laughs> And so it's been playing on Xbox or something. Once I <laughs> no, I just am messing up the. There's a lot. So there's like a lot of systems in this game. Is another thing I would say about like there's just a lot of little things to remember about fineness of control that is a little obnoxious. Okay. Ah, so you're marking them like this. I see what you're And they're all done. Far before the speech was over. Yes. Uh, and so I'm going to switch to my Lancaster repeater. You can tell that my wife's from Pennsylvania because I said Lancaster instead of Lancaster. <laughs> uh, but I still have plenty of dead eye left, I think. Yep, one, two. Just horrific deaths also. You saw like a hole through his face, right? Like it's really brutal. That one for the people who are asking. Uh... If this is okay for children. Not for children. Yeah. Seriously not for children. Not There's for a children. lot of extremely graphic violence in this game. I also noticed how quickly your uh, dead eye meter refilled there. Oh yeah. After the cutscene you're able to use pretty much right away. 
Alright, I'm gonna get out of here, this is stupid. <laughs> And so are there, I saw we had the sniper scope earlier, are there like scope attachments for other guns or anything or? Oh yeah, you can okay. do all sorts of stuff. First and foremost, I didn't mean to pick up this guy's body. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and drop him. <laughs> trying to pick up this hat. Nothing more insulting than wearing a dead man's hat in the middle of the fight. Oh. So, that's kind of what I was trying to get at there, is that your partners can die. So John Marston just died yeah. in the middle of the fight. I'm trying to intentionally show some of the seams here, folks, so I promise this isn't just me being terrible at games. Although, in fairness, I'm terrible at games. So, uh, yeah, you can, you can lose a mission from just not protecting well Spending enough, too much time hat shopping. Right, yes, which I'm good at. Good. There's a little bit of lock-on, too, you can say. Yeah, someone asked, is there any first-person view option? Turns out, there is. There you go. Just like that, you can jump into first-person view in the middle of a gunfight at any time you want, really. It's actually way better to shoot this way. I mean, it seems like it. I'm not, not super shocked by that, but... Yeah, what do you personally prefer? Do you usually use third-person or first? Oh, whoa, 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 that guy's got a gun. Uh, I prefer to use a... Uh, uh, third person. I never use first person, actually. This is the most I've ever used first person right now. Okay. But it is really genuinely much better for shooting. This is a huge difference. Where else? We got more people coming? It's pretty hard to see on this television, admittedly. I'm gonna eat something, too, <laughs> because I'm about to die. Ooh, whoops. That worked. All right. And so people talking about having not played the first game, you already said that the story isn't very essential, I guess, nah. to pick up. Do you think there's anything that gameplay-wise picks up from the first game? I'm obviously, sorry? it's inspired by... Yeah, I mean, there's the gameplay that's very similar. I think this, the first game is very similar gameplay-wise to this. Um, this is just much more pretty. Uh, <laughs> and more detailed. But yes, the gameplay is extremely similar. Guy made a huge mistake. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And so are all these gang members that you're fighting, or are these just people from the town? These are the law. Oh, or, okay. excuse me, these are Leviticus Cornwall's men. Yeah. So in this instance, they're probably like, whatever, random dudes. Uh, random thugs of, of his, right? Like henchmen, so to speak. Uh, I'm gonna get out of, you can see how fast he's walking. Um, so, Sometimes you're fighting the law, sometimes you're fighting Leviticus Cornwall's men, sometimes, come on, I want to put it in the back of his horse. Still, I'm on old boy. <laughs> you can see the horses are all freaking out, too. That's normal. Yeah. Like, if you're in a gunfight, your horse will start freaking out. It's not, it's like, <laughs> it's not great. So this was kind of our sign to leave town, uh, because Leviticus Cornwall uh, showed up and called out Dutch by name and was like, hey, stop stop killing everybody that I, uh, you know, employ and robbing me. Come on, let me do it. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Everybody dead? Nice. I better get out of here. I better get out of here. Let's go. Let's go after this horse. Yeehaw. All right, so I basically just have to escape the law right now, and that's that's pretty much it. But this is the the last major mission in the first area gotcha. uh, of Red Dead Redemption 2, and it's your gang moves on after this because they realize that it's gotten too hot and it's time to get off the block. So they're doing that. Okay. Uh, yeah, but in general, uh, this is kind of how things go in this game. They go from herding sheep to giant gunfights in one step, and it's never clear what's going to happen next, which I like a lot about it, honestly. I think that's, that's like the, the best thing about it, is that it feels like a story in the truest sense. Like there are slow moments, there are high moments, there's a lot of, and there's also just like a lot of normal human being stuff where you're like sleeping or eating or hunting for your gang or whatever, right? Like just normal stuff uh, that is about maintenance and it feels, yeah, it feels natural as a result of that. So okay. that was the sheep and the goats. Um, I think I've made it most of the way back to my camp at this point. 
Cool, and it's just a simple badge. It looks like for the mission completion, there's no you know big splash or no level up marker. It just you know lets you know that you're done. That's it. And there's another marker up here, and we can we can progress from here. But I'm gonna just kind of do some some simple gang stuff here. Um, some people. What you up to? And so later in the game, can you decide where the gang camps, or are they just move where they move? <laughs> it's a strong man. <laughs> Why? I'm sorry, you were asking a question. <laughs> I just saw the, that madness happening. Can you choose where the gang camps, or do they just move as you go through the story? They move as you go through the story. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it's not It's not like a thing where you you're, you sort of choose. What is this about? I'm sorry. Javier <laughs> does not like this guy, apparently. That was great. Anyway, this guy used to be in O'Driscoll. He was a member of another gang. Mm -hmm. And we caught him, and we used him to find the O'Driscolls, and then we killed a bunch of O'Driscolls, and he saved my life. And so he had to become a member of our He was like, you can't just let me go. You have to, I have to become a member of your gang, because I'll be killed if I just, like, <laughs> just let me go into the world, right? Yeah. And so every, nobody trusts him because of that. But he's like, he's just a scared guy who's trying to make it, basically. And there's, so you'll just encounter people basically shit-talking him, right? Like, that guy was just there being like, I don't trust you, I still don't trust you. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. Like, there's nothing precipitating that. That story was several missions ago. It's not like that was a recent thing. Like, there's just ongoing stuff that you can see or not see, right? Like, I could have just not seen that. I could have just kept talking to you and ignored that and never seen that story, and that would have been it, right? Yeah. Uh, hmm. so like, have, just as a warning, we sure. have about 10 minutes left. Okay. If That's there's anything else that you want to dive into, and for the folks at home, if you have any last questions you want to shoot us, uh, we will do our best to address them rapid fire. Like, and so here's a good one: How consistent is the day and night shift of time? Have you picked up on, you know, is it 10 minute intervals? Is it only when you go to sleep? It's definitely not 10 minute intervals. There's a clock in the upper left corner that you might have seen already when I paused the game that is literally just an old timey stopwatch, and that's what time it is. And I don't know how that directly corresponds to time. Like you can't see it moving forward, but. Uh, there is a day-night cycle. There is a weather system. There are light, like huge thunderstorms. There's light mist. There's foggy days. There's like a, a surprisingly wide range of stuff to see there. Um, yeah. So I don't know how like exactly consistent it is. I would say, but I it's definitely an ongoing thing, and it's part of the game. Uh, you can ad I advanced it because like. Corey told me in my ear that the game looked too dark, and so <laughs> we wanted to show the game during the daytime. I otherwise wouldn't have advanced it through sleeping. You can sleep in advanced yeah. time, but you don't have to do that. And if you want to do that, you can too, right? Like if you just rather go to do a mission in the middle of the day or whatever, you can. That said, if it's the middle of the night, you, like, you're not going to find somebody in the bar who might be there to give you a mission in the middle of the day because it's the middle of the night and they're just not there. And so like it'll show up, their icon will show up on the map as grayed out because they're just not there. Gotcha. Hey. So another uh, quick one is can you shoot from the saddle? Which I'm pretty sure is the, uh, see an aim weapon button right there, yeah. Woo. You can shoot from the saddle and then... That guy drew right away as soon as he saw a gun was on him too. It's unfortunately it for that. So you hear this music. That's the you did some real bad stuff music. And uh, it warns you that, you know, uh, maybe something bad could happen, like a witness could come trotting through. Like, do you see anybody in the distance on this road? I don't see anybody. Not yet. That's good, because we're going to move this body before anybody can find it. It takes a, you see how, do you see this animation? Yeah. Do you see this what I'm talking about? There's nothing quick about this game. Like, the act, oh. <laughs> Excuse me. The act of hiding a body is, Time intensive. I had to hide five bodies the other day because I killed a gang, uh, like there was like a gang of O'Driscolls hanging out, whatever. They were waiting to ambush me basically. And I snuck up and I murdered them all. And then I burned down their tent. And I had to kill them all, hide their bodies, and burn. It took like 10 minutes, is what I'm trying to say. It wasn't like a little thing. It was like a long process of me taking out yeah. this little thing, right? In another game, you would have just done it and moved on. This game's like, no, you have to clean it up. You got to go make sure everything's okay. You got to make sure your, your horse isn't upset. Like, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Okay. It is, it's really amazing, but it's also a lot. Like, it's very time intensive, and that, yeah, that can be a lot. Like, and so, I, I guess, to that end, sure. we have someone who asks, 
do these natural mechanics, these immersive, um, immersive devices, mm -hmm. feel repetitive after a time? Like, have you seen a repeated conversation in the camp, or are you getting tired of having to go through the process of hiding bodies and things like that? I'm getting tired of hiding bodies. I would say I'm getting tired of hiding bodies. Okay. I mean, I'm being, I'm joking a little just because I wanted to say I'm tired of hiding bodies, but uh, it's not always the most fun doing all the little stuff. Like, I've definitely stopped looting houses as much, for instance, right? Or like looting corpses, because I just don't want to watch him pick up a body, go through each pocket. Like, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of time that I just don't want to spend watching him do stuff. Um, to the game's credit, you don't have to do that. Uh, and it doesn't, it won't like dramatically impact the game if you, if you don't do that. Um, in terms of like repeated conversations and stuff, some, but like much less. That's the kind of stuff that you see like that becomes so evident immediately in a lot of games and it's just, I've not seen those seams as much in this game. Okay. Um, it's a credit to the amount of voice acting that they recorded, like they've recorded some absurd amount of voice acting for each, like for characters you'll never talk to. It's it's kind of ridiculous, um, but good because it means that you rarely hear repeated dialogue. You rarely, you rarely get the sense that you're in a world full of robots, right? It, yeah. It feels more like you're in a world full of people. Um, and you can see while we've been riding this time, it's been I don't know a few minutes. Sun's gone down. And we saw the transmission. I guess out. can you hit the watch again just so I can see what time it is? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so about an hour passed in the last like four or five minutes. So that right. Got gotcha. you. It's, it's going. They're going to make it about a day per hour, if you were to scale it out. It seems about a day per hour if every five minutes it's an hour. Anyway. Sure. Someone is asking, can you choose the time of day for missions the way you can in Metal Gear Solid Five? No. Okay, you can't choose the time of day. And I'll piggyback on that question by asking, do any mechanics change in day or night? You know, does like, enemy visibility change? Is there that kind of detail? Uh, I mean, enemy visibility changes in terms of like them seeing you. Yeah, like them seeing you or like, you know, stealth shootout kind of stuff at day and night. I would imagine that there are some effects there. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how you would even measure that really. Like, yeah. in fairness, it's not like as no obvious as sneaking here where there's like, you know, a percentage. Oh, What's the up? convict. I've been on the run for days now. <laughs> <laughs> if you could help me with these shackles, I, I just might have a chance. I will help you. So how'd you end up like this? There is you sleep to... chains already, Ooh. come on! <laughs> All right. Just shoot the chains off. Please. So he wants you to I'm shoot his chains off, otherwise. okay. Where is it? It's gotta be his ankles. Oh, shit. Come on, do it! Oh, oh, yes, yes, perfect, ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I got no money to give you, but I think I might got something even better. Some of those fellows talked about this old crone up north of Strawberry. Got herself a tidy sum locked away. Oh, yeah? Maybe just stories, but they were sure excited. Oh, yeah? Home robbery oh, tip. Be in there that, you go. Huh? Um, I don't know, just a hunch. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> anyway, uh, there are strangers all over the world that you might run into. For instance, escaped prisoners who mm. want you to help them get out of their chains. Or you might meet a person who had a horse fall on them. Or you might find somebody who's got their foot caught in a bear trap. Or uh, somebody who's been taken hostage by somebody and they're running past, they're on the back of a horse while the person who took them hostage is going past you. And they're like, help, help, and you're like, what? And maybe you turn around and help them, maybe not. Got to react, uh, okay. I would strongly suggest you help them because they might give you some sweet rewards later on, but at very least, they'll probably give you a tip about a home robbery. And who doesn't want a home robbery tip? Come on. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of the very broad overview of Red Dead Redemption 2. It is a massive, sprawling game. Uh, I think it's a kind of unbelievable achievement of a game. I don't know that it's the most fun game in the world, but it is certainly an incredible achievement and something you should play. It's it's like worth seeing as if you're into games at all, you should play Red Dead Redemption 2. Let me put it that way. Even if you don't like it, you should check it out <laughs> because it's like an incredibly impressive feat. 
So anyway, that has been Red Dead Redemption 2. We'll be back with more video games for you live on the internet next week on Friday, the same place, YouTube, uh, the Tech Insider channel. And if you want to see this whole video, stay tuned afterwards uh, because it'll be up as an archive. And uh, you know, leave us comments, let us know what you want to see. And uh, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. And uh, yee-haw! Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs>